All right, so how's everybody doing? Today we are working on our chainsaw porting class series. And if this is your first video, just going down the description, there will be a link down there to a playlist. And if you go through that playlist, you'll be able to see this series from start to finish. Now, before we go any further, I just want to mention that uh, I was originally going to go through and show how to do a bunch of the repairs on this particular saw. Uh, it happens to be a Home Light Super XL Auto. But I decided to keep it with within just the, the porting side of it. But if you're looking for any of that information, uh, there is a source for pretty much any repair you could possibly want to make. Um, and this gentleman happens to be probably one of the best or in the field. And his name is Leon. All you got to do is go to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. He has a YouTube channel and he has a store for a lot of your parts. And he has videos on just about any repair imaginable for home lights. So if you're not familiar with them, I suggest going on over there and uh, he can help you work out your, your repair needs if you have any that you find. Alrighty. Now today, we're gonna focus more on compression, squish, things like that. Uh, discuss that a little bit and some of your choices that you can, you can make. Now, one of the things that affect compression is your ring. Let me get one here. Here's an old ring. Now, whenever your ring is installed, that gap at the top, you want to measure that gap. Okay, let me show you here. There's a cylinder. I'm going to stick that ring down in the cylinder. Okay. I got a ring in there. I got the gap. Now I'm going to measure it. And what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use this, this uh, feeler gauge here to get kind of an idea of how much gap there is. My thickest one on here is, looks like 25 thousandths. And I am well over 25 thousandths on that gap. So I'm gonna add several others. Now if you look on your feeler gauge, there's different measurements on them. You can see mine are getting kind of rusty. But I'm gonna stack these up until I measure the thickness of that gap. Right now I have the three thickest ones put together. And it's even more than that. So we're gonna add another one. I'm just looking for a ballpark here. I'm gonna add another one. That's too thick. So, my measurement would be the combination of all four of these, okay? which is a 21 thousandth, 22 thousandths, 23 thousandths, and 24 thousandths, all added together. Roughly, that would be roughly 90 thousandths in the ring gap. Now, I'm gonna locate a brand new ring here. These rings come in the kit for a brand new piston comes from Little Red Barn. 
I'm going to stick this ring in there. And I can already tell you that the gap is considerably smaller. I'm going to go with one of my thinnest. Here is 15 thousandths. Let's try that. And 25 thousandths doesn't want to go. Uh, so I'm probably roughly 20 thousandths. Considerable difference. That is going to affect compression. Um, because that gap is so big. Let me show you. Let me give you an up close personal up close shot here. So that's the aftermarket ring gap right there. You can see that's a different design. You're going to notice here in a second that that is a different kind of a design than the original. Okay, so let me put the original in. So there's the original. You can see there is a considerable difference in the ring gap. So you can see there's a different kind of a design between those two rings. The aftermarket one is a better design because it has that little hook on it. There is a pin, let me show you, on the piston. You see these little pins? That little hook will kind of go over that pin and help close that gap up. Um, it is a, the aftermarket one is a better design you'll end up with better compression. So if you're out there and uh, if you notice a large ring gap there, I suggest replacing your rings. Uh, personally, I like the ring that comes with the aftermarket kit from Little Red Barn. Uh, it's just, it's a better design and so forth, uh, it will perform considerably better. On the last video, I made a mistake and I installed a piston without considering how difficult those pistons can be to find. So I went ahead and installed a factory replacement piston. And we're gonna go with a factory setup. That way you can build exactly what I'm doing. Um, later on, if I choose to, I'll go in and change the piston out. But the rings are gonna give me a considerable difference in compression just by putting new ones in, if you know what I mean. Now that, that aftermarket piston, or not aftermarket, that other piston I put in, um, it didn't change my timing at all. It's just the center of the piston that's a little higher. It uh, you know, it closes off some of that. It's kind of like a pop-up piston. It, it works kind of like a pop-up piston. So I would gain a little bit of compression with it. But it's, it timed out the same as a factory piston. Um, so my, my, my exhaust number is still at 105. Now, let's talk about the squish a little bit here. Let's pull this cylinder off. This is the cylinder we're working on. Now, the squish is the distance between the top of the piston and the top of the cylinder. And it depends on your choices and how much you need to, to affect that. Now, one way to change your squish is to put the cylinder on a lathe and machine enough off the base so that whenever you bolt it on, the whole thing sits down a little lower. That'll pull your piston up higher, closing your squish off. It'll increase compression. And with this particular saw, a lot of pokes will find that if they try to do that, they're gonna free port. So this is one thing we need to take in consideration during our decision-making process on our build and on our final results. Are we going to try to shave some of this off? 
Um, I've already decided I'm removing the base gasket. So we're going to run without a base gasket here. That's going to take, you know, that takes roughly 30 thousandths off of my squish, you know, which is a decent amount. And with a new set of rings, what was my compression at starting at? I started out at 130 pounds of compression. And with a fresh set of rings, that's going to jump up. So keep that in mind. Um, now, so if you have the machinery and you notice that you can, you have the ability to do it, maybe you, you might want to take a few thousandths off. Uh, you know, some people do not have the machinery. So on this particular build, we're not going to shave anything off the cylinder base on this build. This is going to be something an average homeowner can do at home. Now, another thing to consider is uh, rod ratio. Um, so what I'm talking about here is the amount of time the piston spends at top dead center. Okay. Some will spend more time at the top without moving so much than others. I'm just going to touch this a little bit, but you'll, you'll notice that like here is 10 degrees before top dead center. Here's 10 degrees after top dead center and that piston barely moves. So what's going on here is when that fires, because the piston's staying up there for that amount of time, it's going to have that amount of time to help build pressure. Now, I have in the past set up an indicator that went down the spark plug hole, and I could measure exactly how long it stayed up there and moved so many thousands and all that stuff. I've been down that road. Um, it depends on how wild of a build you're going for. You don't need to mess with it with this build that I'm showing you, but I just wanted to touch it for a second. Just to give you an example that there are other factors in play. The one piston I put in that was a little taller at the center, it didn't affect squish because they're at the same height. The squish is measured at the edge of the cylinder. So even though the piston was taller, the squish didn't change. So there's another thing you gotta consider. It's not always about the squish. There are other things to consider. So just try to think about that in your builds. So one of the reasons I wanted to discuss this is there's more factors to consider than just the squish. So if you have a piston with a pop-up, you know, if it has a pop-up on it, like here's one, I got a pop-up piston sitting right here, I'll show you. All right, so here's a, uh, this is to a Husqvarna. See, see the center of that? We got a pop-up. The squish would not be affected, but we are gonna affect the compression because we have a pop-up. You know what I mean? So there's, there's more to consider than just squish. But if you're building a simple firewood saw, you don't need to think about it a lot. There's flaws in the design of any engine and by improving or fixing those flaws, uh, you will improve performance. And some saws will improve drastically um, just by fixing a few of those flaws without even touching your squish. So it's not necessarily the first thing you wanna think about, all right? Now, how much compression is too much is too much. That's one thing you got to consider as well. Um, what you want to think about is your bearings. Uh, connecting rod bearings, uh, crankshaft bearings, all that stuff. Uh, the bearings are going to take the abuse with high compression. 
the more compression you give it, the more abuse the bearings get. So think of like a, like a Husqvarna. They have bigger bearings or sturdier. Uh, these Super XLs, I don't think they could handle the kind of compression that 20 thousandths of squish would give you. I honestly don't. I probably wouldn't build one to that spec because I don't think the bottom end would handle it. The rotating assembly. So, I haven't had one fail yet. But I think the highest compression Super XL I've built was in the 170 pound range. Um, sometimes I don't replace the rings. So... That's one thing to consider too. So if I pull saw apart and the rings, you know, this, the, the ring gap's good, now I'll, I'll just keep the rings. I, I don't replace them if I don't have to sometimes. Uh, but you got to consider that. Now, I don't typically start turning up a saw until I get to about 170 pounds of compression, 70, 175 pounds of compression. Uh, so... You know, keep that in mind as well. If you start turning your saw up without any compression, you're not going to have the torque. Because compression is a big factor in your torque. Uh, it's, it's common with any engine build. Compression does affect your torque. Or I should say it's one considerable factor. Now, if you're putting your saw together and you came up with, uh, if you started out at 130 pound of compression, we need to try to get it up. I typically tear a saw down. Once it gets to about 120, I, I pull it, I tear it down and I replace the rings or whatever. To me, 120 is low enough that I would tear it down and start working on it, start fixing that. Because once you get to 100, it's still gonna run, but you start getting below 100, you're gonna have trouble getting it to run. Um, 120 pounds, you will pull with power. Uh, won't be a ton of power, you'll be limited to, now I'm, I'm talking about these Super XLs. So at 120 pound of compression, your 20 inch bar is probably gonna be your, your the max bar length you wanna go with. Now another thing to consider is, when you turn it up, those rings are, over time are gonna wear out and you're gonna to start to lose some compression over time. So do you wanna take it to the absolute limit with your build right now? Or do you wanna be conservative with it and give it you know, that some longevity before you start running into trouble? You know, maybe having to change rings or so forth. So there's another thing to consider whenever you're looking to turn your saws up. Uh, if you've seen my videos of my Super XL that I built, and you're happy with that, uh, it's pulling 28 inch bar at four RPM in the cut. That's the kind of build we're doing right now. So if you're looking to run a 20 inch bar all the time and you wanna go a little more RPM, that's possible. I'll give you some of those pointers, but me personally, I like the, I like to go to a longer bar before I start turning up the RPMs. That's me personally. I don't like bending over to get to my wood. So, 24 to 28 inch bar, I wanted to be able to pull that before I start turning the RPM up. But we're gonna move into the transfers, I think, on the next video. Do a little grinding and then move from there. The transfers are where most of our work most the transfers are where most of our performance increases are gonna happen. So be prepared. Alrighty. See you in the next one. Later.